Um, so welcome to this afternoon's session. So it's all about communication. Um, and as Pete said, there are four parts. So the first part I'm going to do, which is about key messaging. Um, and then we, the second part straight after that is about external voices. So that's where we've got some messages from other organizations that we uh, collaborate with. Um, and then we can have, we'll have a Q&A at the end of each of those two. And then that will bring us up to the uh, break at half three, um, after which we've got Rob Lennox then talking about advocacy and all the work that he does and others are on that front. And then finally, um, we'll have Maria. Where's Maria? Um, uh, there from Oxford Archaeology, who's going to be running a workshop where you guys are going to do a little bit of work on messaging and communication. So that's kind of where we are um, this afternoon. So. The first session, as I say, is key messaging. As, as Pete introduced me, so yeah, I'm, I'm an external consultant. I've been working with CIFA for, for many years. Um, and, um, and also I work with a range of other clients, including Oxford Archaeology, which is great to see you guys here today. Um, and also other organizations like the RIBA, um, range of architectural practices and so on. So my work is all about it is about marketing, but it's kind of more about that and more than that. It's also about engagement and communicating more effectively and improving an organization's performance through those things. So they're the sorts of things that I do. Um, key messaging is part of that. Um, and what I'm going to run through uh, this afternoon is what is key messaging, um, what makes a good key message, and where does that fit within other things that you're doing in terms of in terms of marketing um, and in terms of overall strategy. Then we'll look at CIFA's key messages because CIFA's had key messages for some time, but there's been a refresh of them. So we'll go through those key messages. Um, and then um, we will talk as well about why key messaging is important to CIFA, but not just to CIFA, but to everybody in the room as well. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity for questions at the end. Okay, so what do I mean by key messaging? So key messaging um, is it's the most important piece of information that you want an organization, uh, that you want your audiences to understand. Now, I say you, we're here talking about CIFA's key messages, but this is as relevant to CIFA as it is to any other organization, whether that's an archeological contractor, whether that's a local authority, whether that's an, another professional body, whatever that might be. So all organizations really could have key messaging, probably do have key messaging. It's not necessarily something everybody all, always recognizes that they have. Um, and what an exercise like this, like we've done with CIFA, what it does is kind of, it, it puts a structure to it. So as I say, all organizations have messages that you all have something that you want to say to your audiences. Um, but this is a kind of systematic way of organizing those key pieces of information into a set of key messages. And they're the foundation for all marketing communications. And it's all about um, consistency. So that's the kind of the, 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 the point to it, really, that you come up with a set of key messages, but then you use them consistently across time. And there's the point about long term repetition. So. The idea is you come up with the key messages and they're incorporated into as many pieces of marketing, communications and other, um, and, and other materials as, as you can. And over time, through repetition, those pieces of information are, are then understood by your audiences. So that's what it means. Um, what makes a good key message? So we've got clear, concise, active, positive and specific. So these are similar kind of words to, that's often used for things like objectives. People talk about smart objectives, um, specific, measurable, and all those things. So it's very kind of similar. But if we just look at those kind of words, it, some of them are quite obvious. If you're thinking about creating a set of key messages, they should be clear. I mean, it kind of goes without saying. You need clarity in your messaging, whatever that might be about. Um, concise is really important as well, so don't be too long-winded. Um, I've got a slide with a few organizations um, who, who, who have done a similar exercise relatively recently. We're not going to go through and dissect each of them, but they're there for you, you to maybe go and have a look yourselves. Um, and some are kind of better than others on this particular point about being concise. I think it's very easy to overcomplicate anything. 
Um, and sometimes there's a tendency to overcomplicate things because you feel that that makes them more important if they're really complicated. But that's not the case. It doesn't matter if something is simple, it still can be really powerful. Um, active and positive are similar. So active meaning kind of the active voice. So, um, and positive meaning that, you know, your messaging, it doesn't mean that your messaging can't address or key messaging can't address challenges and can't address things that are issues, but, but, the, but the language that's used should be positive. So, so it's all about helping with things and, it, you know, rather than resolving things. We were having a conversation about this the other day. You know, is it better to talk about helping with challenges and helping with solutions than it is about resolving things? So resolving things might have a negative connotation. So it's little things like that that, 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 are, that are good to bear in mind um, and specific as well. So when you think about strategic goals and objectives, or certainly goals, they can be quite broad. Um, so, you know, as an organization, you could have the goal of growth you want to grow by a certain percentage or or that you want to expand into a different uh, geographic area or a different um, sector or possibly not sector but um, but those kind of goals can be quite loose um, whereas with key messaging it's better to be quite specific so a key message is about a particular thing and that lends itself to being more easily understood rather than being quite general so they're the things that make up a good key message. These are the organizations that I mentioned. There are loads of organizations that use key messaging. These are just some that are kind of, you know, relevant in some way, shape or form. Perhaps not scouts, but I love the scouts. So <laughs> I put it in there. Um, and then um, Institute of Conservation, which is a very much a friend of CIFA in terms of um, outside organizations in, in other sectors working closely together. Uh, they've got quite a lot on their website about their key messaging. Um, and then the World Health Organization I put there, I mean, maybe, maybe not surprising, their key messaging is quite complex. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's, you know, appropriate for them. You could argue both ways probably with that. But, you know, having a look at some of these organizations and what they're doing in terms of key messaging is, is quite useful. Um, now, where does, it, where does key messaging fit in? And I think this is quite important because, yes, you could start a, a key messaging project to say, look, we need a set of key messages about our organization, about our archaeological, um, our archaeological unit, or our. I've, we'll come back to that word actually. So I've, I've just, I've just that wasn't actually on purpose. <laughs> I've, I've slipped into using. I talked about language and being clear and things like that. So anyway, we'll come back to that. Maria's going to talk about that um, the, the, after the tea break, actually. Um, but anyway, your own organizations, if you're looking to um, create a set of key messages um, to get across those key pieces of information to the people that need to understand them, that's fine. And that's what we're talking about today. But it is quite important to think about that in, in the wider context. You could just do that as a discrete project. And there wouldn't really be anything wrong with that. But actually, there are certain things that kind of need to be in place before that. And I, this is the process I would argue that you should go through in order to get to the point where you're ready to create a set of key messages. This is certainly what CIFA has done. It's what other clients might have done. It's the sort of thing that I would, I would, I would suggest. But as I say, if you just wanted to, in fact, at the workshop that Maria is going to lead um, this afternoon, we're going to get you to do a bit of key messaging, going to get you to do a little bit of, 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 of communication. So I'm not suggesting before or during the tea break that you come up with a strategy, a marketing strategy and plan, you know, come up with some targeted audiences and then create a positioning statement. You can do that during the tea break if you wish, but I'm not suggesting that. It's not, it's not essential, but these are quite important steps. Um, so the strategy side of things, I mean, I'm sure you all know this, I'm sure you all know this, but certainly a lot of people I talk to um, in terms of in, in, in the course of my work, do get a little bit confused about actually what a strategy is. For me, it's the framework. It's not a plan, importantly. A strategy is not a plan. A strategy is a framework for allocating resources against goals. It's a, it's a general approach, um, and it's, a, it's a, a set of kind of decisions for how you approach what you're doing. That's what I would argue a strategy is. In the Q&A, we can come back and talk about any of this, by the way, but that's my view on what a strategy is. 
But that's the overarching strategy. And sorry, just going back there, there is uh, CIFA has a strategy, as I'm sure you know, and it's a 10 year strategy starting in 2021, running through to 2030. So two years in, um, and and the, the key message work is very much in support of that strategy. So that's how the whole thing comes around in full circle. Then you need some kind of marketing plan or marketing strategy and plan. Um, so this is where you get into the more details. So this is where you set objectives rather than goals. Um, and um, it's where you, you, you have all of the detail to know exactly what you're doing in terms of marketing. None of these things have to be huge documents. They don't have to take enormous amounts of time and resources to create. Could be one sheet of A4 paper, but it's important to have a strategy and to have a marketing plan before you go through to key messaging because it's the structure and the framework um, that it gives you that enables you to understand what you need to do with the key messaging. Um, you also need to target audiences um, because any messaging in any kind of marketing communications is all about the audience. So you can create key messages thinking, wow, that's fantastic. We've created all these key messages. We know the key pieces of information we want uh, people to uh, understand. But if you don't think about who those people are, then you might get the key messaging wrong. Or you might think, actually, there's a slightly different key message for different audiences, which, of course, is also completely legitimate. Mm -hmm. And you can tailor and refine key messaging for different audiences. That does slightly stray into complication, which I'm a fan of not complicating things. But, you know, there is a bit of freedom with this. And so where we talk about consistency within key messaging, that is true. But at the same time, if you need to slightly refine it to make it really gel with a particular audience, then that's also fine, as long as the core meaning of the key message doesn't change. So we can come back to that, I think, when we go through CIFA's key messages. But that's quite an important thing to recognize. And I've just given, this is a list really of CIFA's target audiences, probably quite similar. I mean, you wouldn't have, most of you wouldn't have members, but you certainly have clients and you certainly have past clients and you have potential clients. You have staff, most of you, not all of you, of course, but most, a lot of you will have staff um, and, um, and you know, as I say, clients. And then co-professionals in the context of CIFA are those organizations that we've kind of have been touched on this morning. And we'll, in the next session, we'll talk about those external organizations. Um, but we're talking there in the CIFA context, when I talk about co-professionals, we're talking about planners, we're talking about architects, we're talking about construction project managers, those kinds of people. But for you guys in the audience who are running archaeological um, consultancies and contractors, then the co-professionals would be, well, you still need to talk to those co-professionals, but they might also be collaborators or joint venture partners or, you know, all those kind of people. That, that's the sort of people I'm talking about. So but it's just important to always keep your audiences in mind. And then a positioning statement. So a positioning statement is, is important. This, this session is about key messaging, not about positioning statement. But I put CIFA's one up there anyway. And it is quite important because it's the, that real sort of top level. The positioning statement is, you know, who are you? How do you want to be perceived? How do you want to be seen by others? So in CIFA's case, it's as the leading professional body for uh, representing archaeologists um, in the UK and overseas. That's the positioning statement. A lot of you will probably have one. You might not know it, but you probably have got one. Um, and so creating one of these in advance of those key messages is, is useful. So now we're on to the key messages themselves. So there are seven key messages. I'm just going to run through them relatively quickly. Um, and But please do, in the Q&A, come back to any of the key messages that you see. These are CFA's key messages. Um, and then, you know, we can discuss them uh, if you wish. One thing I would say is that they're CFA's key messages, but it's all about the profession. And so they're, in a way, your key messages too. And so what what we're really encouraging you to do is kind of absorb these and you can have 
copy of the slides and the key messages afterwards, of course. Um, but it is partly about being on message. So there are certain things in these key messages like, you know, adding value or creating value, I should say, that, that they're the sorts of things that if you could weave these into your own communications with your clients and others and other audiences, then that becomes a sort of virtuous circle with everybody's using. I'm, I'm not talking about necessarily using this verbatim. You know, not actually archaeology creates value. For if you want to, that's absolutely fine. But it's this concept of creating value. That's the really, that was touched on this morning as well. So it, we're just kind of sharing all this with you in the hope that actually, well, two things. One is that you, you, you kind of understand the work that's being done and the reasoning behind it. And and hopefully you see, you see value in the fact that this work is being done. But all more than that, it's about encouraging you to use these messages as well, or certainly the the spirit of these messages in your own communication. So, creating value for business and society, and then to maximise that value, it needs to be done. It needs to be carried out with professionalism. Now, you'll notice I'm the way that I've written these is that they follow on as if you were speaking one after the other. That's not to say that they have to be used in that way. You could just use this one in isolation if you happen to be talking about professionalism or or you want to get across the professionalism topic, which we would encourage you to do. And then the third key message is about what does that mean? What does professionalism mean? So we're saying that it needs to be carried out with professionalism, but what does that actually mean? And notice we're not using the word professional. So it's not about professional being professional, it's about professionalism, about demonstrating professionalism. And it means being ethical, competent and accountable and working in the public interest. So that's CIFA's definition of professionalism. We hope you agree with that. And then the fourth key message moving on from that is that the way that CIFA, um, or the way that you, that you can demonstrate professionalism is through CIFA accreditation. So that brings in, so from professionalism, creating value through to professionalism, through to accreditation. So they're the stages, if you like. That's the story that we're trying to tell. It, archaeology can create value if it's done with professionalism, and the way to demonstrate that is through C for accreditation. And then C for accredits professional, professionalism against the code of conduct and standards. And of course, that again was touched on this morning more than touched on this morning. So again, that's part of the story. And then why does that matter? Why does that matter to anybody? Well, it matters because if you use an accredited archaeologist, then it means that clients, uh, clients are assured that the work is um, carried out to their needs, meeting their needs, but also done in the public interest. So that's the really, that's the kind of, that's the, that's the kind of the, the, the money shop, as it were. And then also, um, by promoting professionalism, CIFA helps attract diverse talent and develop careers. So there are the key messages. There's all seven of them there. And then you can go one stage further than that and distill these down even more. So these are quite complex things, quite com complex concepts, um, one could argue. Um, and if you're trying to explain any of these things to your clients, for example, then, you know, you can use these key messages to explain these things, but you can distill it down even further. <clears throat> so I'm highlighting key words and phrases here. So creates value is the first one. Professionalism. Ethical, competent and accountable. The public interest accreditation, code of conduct and standards, client needs are met, and diverse talent and developing careers. So you could even distill those key messages down into those nine words and phrases. That's not what we're suggesting you do necessarily in terms of if you were to use the key messages, but this is the kind of the spirit, this is the meaning, the real core of those key messages. You know, they're written, they're written here in a way that's easy to drop them into emails, drop them into 
you know, brochures on um, tweets on social media or whatever it might be on the website. So they can be dropped in nice and easily. But if you just want to get across the core, then it's these things. Creating value, professionalism, ethics, accreditation, and so on. And why is it important? So, as I said at the beginning, it distills down what you're trying to say. So it's those real pieces of information, those really important things that you want, you, all of us, you know, the collective you. So whether that's CIFA or whether that's your own organizations, it's those key things that you want people to understand, distilling it right down as much as you can into digestible pieces of information, easy to understand. That's all when I put up that slide earlier about being clear and being concise. They have to be easy to understand. Um, and your audiences know what you're trying to achieve, um, why you're doing what you're doing, um, and what you're doing, of course, and why it's important. And they set you apart. It's ultimately, it's about differentiation. It's about, we've got something to say as an organization. As I say, it's not just about CIFA, it's about your own organizations, your own businesses as well. Why are you different? What, what have you got to say about things? Why should somebody be, be interested? So it's about a USP, it's about setting you apart, it's about differentiation. Mm -hmm.